So I've been taking a look at all three games in the Mario 3D All-Stars collection to give my thoughts on each title individually, and the reason I wanted to do that is so I could talk about the quality of each of the individual games on their own separately, so then I could then do this video about the actual quality of this package, of this collection, the work that went into it, because I think it's important to separate what is largely three classic games with huge fan bases, a lot of people who love them, from the actual collection so it doesn't sound like when I'm going to say probably a lot of negative things to keep it clear that I'm not actually trying to hate on the games, more so what we actually got in this package. So yeah, today's the day I want to talk about the actual collection, uh, the value of it, is it worth the price, all that good stuff. Let's start by talking about the games themselves. Now again, I've already given my thoughts more in depth on each game individually, but what I want to address here is specifically the effort that went into bringing these games over to the Switch, which is virtually none. <laughs> these games are running through emulation. There's a few small things they changed for uh, like Switch prompts and that, but very little was done to actually improve the titles for this collection. Mario 64, I've stated a bunch of times, really could use like a full-on remake at this point. Like if you're gonna go all out for any Mario game, this is the one to do that with. Like I said in my Mario 64 video, I love this game to pieces, have immense nostalgia for it, but I can admit it is rough to play these days. The stiff controls, terrible camera, etc. And this celebration would have been the perfect time to do something like a new remake for it. But at the bare minimum, and this is something I've seen people bring up a lot, they could have brought us over the DS version of this game, which itself is pretty much a remake for the DS that added new content as well as Yoshi as a playable character. And I get the nostalgia factor with N64. Myself, I'd want to be able to play the original version of the game. Makes total sense. But you could have easily put both versions in here. Uh, honestly, with the way the games are just running on emulators, it's like there's no reason you couldn't have loaded this package up. And that's kind of going to be the theme of this video. Sunshine holds up much better. I wouldn't really change much of it in terms of the overall game. I think it makes sense to preserve the experience, even all the bugs in that. I think it's better that they're in there. It's true to the original game. But some of the issues, like with the controls, there are new issues that weren't as bad, in my opinion, on the GameCube. And as I stated, I think adding the option for gyro aiming with Flood would have made this game feel way better. The issues with the controls in that, I'd say, was a big miss for Sunshine. And again here, like when I brought this up in my Sunshine video, I saw people bringing up like, oh, well, it's just running off a GameCube emulator. That would be a lot more work to like add the gyro controls. Uh, okay, and? You know, it's like people use as a defense for Nintendo, like, oh, if they did what you're asking, they'd have to actually do some work on these games. I, I guess we can't have that. We can't have Nintendo, one of the biggest companies in the gaming industry, burdened with having to do some actual work on these titles. And Galaxy, I think, is great the way it is. I don't think it really needed much more than the HD bump in terms of an upgrade. And I think the motion controls transition over to the Switch, uh, like with the gyro stuff and that, rather nicely. So overall, I don't think the games are that bad. Really, N64, I would say, was the big missed opportunity. But it's like, when you look at the work that actually went into bringing these games over, it's extremely minimalistic. And then it's like we move on to the extras, or more so, lack thereof. All we really have are the soundtracks, like you can go through and play the individual music tracks from each of these games. Probably one of the lamest extras you can possibly have. Does anyone, I gotta ask this because I remember when they tried to make it like this was a thing uh, with Smash where they had the commercial and everything and they were like, look, you can use your Switch as a iPod and listen to the Smash Brothers music on it. Does anyone actually do that? Walk around with their Switch like it's an iPod? It seems like the most impractical thing I've ever seen, uh, when you could just either download the songs or listen to them via YouTube on your phone or something. Yeah, I, I don't see really much value in that at all. And this is Mario, guys. The video game character with the most history. Even with just these three games, you're going back over 20 years. Where's even like, I, I don't know, some concept art? Any developer interviews with the people who worked on these games? I would have loved to watch like a mini documentary on the development of Mario 64. I think that'd be awesome. Again, with this being a collection, if you're going to offer up any cool extras, goodies for these games, 
It's like, now is the time. How about a manual to act as a throwback to the old days or something? And you didn't really give us anything even like with the box art and cartridge. All of that feels so generic and boring to me. I get making it clear what's in the collection, but man, you could have done so many cooler things with this. I retweeted a piece of art recently that I came across and wrote something like this would have made such a cool alternative cover to the collection, like even as a reversible one, like we've seen with tons of other games. And at that point, I feel like I'm asking for the bare, bare minimum here. Like you couldn't give me a reversible cover. Even the menu screen seems so slapped together. I mean, you compare this to what I consider to be the ultimate collection ever released in video games, the Rare Replay Collection, 30 quality rare titles for $30, 30 games for half the price you're paying for these three games. And again, games like Banjo-Kazooie, Perfect Dark, Battletoads, Conkers, tons of fantastic stuff and all the fancy things they did, having interviews on each game, menus, all this history, so cool. And then you look at what Nintendo did with this and it's like, it looks like a joke. But let's address the biggest omission in this package, Super Mario Galaxy 2. How stupid is it to not have this game in the collection? We have Galaxy 1, so it's not like we're talking about moving on to the next gen of Mario, like we're asking for 3D World to be in this thing. We're talking about the other big Wii Mario title. Like I said in my video with Galaxy, it just feels wrong having a Mario collection where I'm playing Galaxy, but can't go on to Galaxy 2, and it's like, uh, there's probably not going to be another 3D collection. I mean, I guess they could put the DS and 3DS stuff on there with Galaxy 2, but I think that'd be a pretty rough sell. Uh, and we know 3D World, if we're talking about anything after that, uh, is going to be released on the Switch on its own for 60 bucks. And if we're talking about the value, I do not think it's like Nintendo would be giving too much away here, even by their standards, which are very stingy. I think Galaxy 1 and 2 were like 20 bucks each on the Wii U eShop, and 64 was like 10 So for those three games on the Wii U, you're paying, what, like 50 bucks, Which brings us to the main question of the video. Is the 3D collection worth the price? Like I said, I'm glad these games are available on the Switch. They're still a lot of fun to play, but I really don't think this thing is worth $60. I think in terms of being a collection, nothing feels special about it. Practically nothing has been done to improve these games where there's plenty of simple upgrades that could have been done. Extras are practically non-existent. And I do think Galaxy 2 should have been included. Not to mention on top of that, while not necessarily a price factor, all this nonsense they're doing with the time-limited nature of the collection, uh, even pulling it from the Switch eShop at the end of March, just seems like a cheap, dirty method to panic buyers into grabbing it because they're worried it's going to go away. Which, I honestly, I don't think these games will go away. I think they'll be made available in another form. I don't see Nintendo, like, permanently removing them. Which, this is actually a good point about it feeling weak as a collection, a celebration of Mario for this big anniversary. If these games were made available separately, just the games on their own, for the same price combined as you're paying for this collection, would you really care about buying them that way? Would you feel like you're losing value by not having this collection? I don't think so, because they didn't add anything in here. Yeah, once more, I love the fact that these games are on the Switch, and I want to make it abundantly clear that... I've enjoyed playing them, and I'm definitely not trying to say like, oh, you're a blind fanboy for accepting this or anything like that, even if you think, you know, the value is there, because these are three classic games. But in terms, once more, of this being this big anniversary celebration collection, I think the quality, the work that went into it, is laughable. Anyway, with that, this video's a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on Mario 3D All-Stars Collection in the comments. Are you enjoying the game? Do you think it's worth the price? And how do you feel about the effort that went into this package? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion on the Mario 3D All-Stars Collection. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you want to keep the conversation going, hit me up on Twitter, at Johnny Zakari. And join my Discord, Shy Guy and Friends. Link to both in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.